Hey beautiful humans, my name is Dania Raviets and I help people thrive despite their health challenge. This is a, I don't know how many part video series, just videos that I'm making to share with you where I'm at with my journey of health. Um, what has happened previously, what I think caused my MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, so I live thriving with multiple sclerosis. And just a few thoughts and, and things on my journey. I just really wanted, I've been asked so many times to share and so here I am. Part two of this video is about, so where I left off in part one, so if you haven't watched that, go back and watch part one, the video before. Um, I was talking about my first symptom of MS and then what happened. So in New Zealand I didn't um, I didn't meet the diagnostic criteria of MS. I had just had one symptom of optic neuritis. This is at the time of this video it was um, four years ago, just over four years ago and I had they found uh, lesions on my brain on MRI, which is normally the way that they check for diagnosis of MS. Sometimes too, I think they do now a lumbar puncture also. However, um, most diagnostic criteria in different countries is um, you've had a symptom or a couple of symptoms and you have the lesions present. This might change obviously in the future, but that's how it stands now. So I had one symptom, optic neuritis, where my right eye was sore and it was blurry and that spontaneously recovers. Um, I was told that I didn't qualify for a diagnosis in New Zealand. So this is four years ago. So then I quit my job. Um, I left New Zealand. I bought a one-way ticket to Australia. And I, I didn't know then, but what I know now is that I was going to another country to create myself. I was going to another country to escape my childhood conditioning, if you will. Often many of us, and this is something I've discovered, since my journey, um, we're travelers, we have the wanderlust, we want to explore, we want to be free, we want to just go like far away from our homeland, we often end up living over there, we find partners overseas, etc, etc, and we have this itch that we just have to scratch constantly or, or forever or whatever. What I now realize in reflecting back is I needed to go overseas to Australia to live there to be able to create 100% who I am. And when I say create that, it's like I went away from my childhood friends, I went away from my family, I went away from all the structures and the conditioning that made Danny then who she was. All the shoulds, all the being a good girl for my parents, for example, all the expectations of, of my teachers or my lecturers or those people that thought that they knew what my trajectory should be, for example. So I went to Australia, I didn't know at the time, but on a one-way ticket and I got there and, and certain events happened that meant that I was like, you know what, this is my place. This is my place for now at least, or for then. Um, so I was in Australia and I got into a job which knowing now wasn't quite right for me. It was perfect though. You know those situations where in hindsight you're like, that's why I had to have that job. And there were so many friggin' reasons why I needed that job. That's a whole video series in itself. Um, yet, it caused me a lot of pain. It caused me a lot of emotional pain. What it did was bring to the surface my emotional pain to allow me to look at it. It also subsequently or simultaneously brought up a lot of physical pain which was stored in my body. And I now know through that experience the deep intimate connection between emotional pain and physical pain and how through relieving emotional pain we can change physical pain as well. Not necessarily without working on the physical simultaneously, but both uh, modalities or both ways of seeing illness and dysfunction and pain and stuckness or whatever, um, fear, etc. Um, is just so freaking powerful when we see them in, in relationship to each other and, and work on both rather than just one and then wonder why there's just this element that's still, you know, faffing around. Why this is relevant is because I, as I progressed in this job that I was stuck in, this is my belief structure, right? I wasn't actually stuck. I had full choice, but I didn't believe or didn't feel like I had the power or the, the something in me that could get out of the situation I was in. I didn't believe in that instance that I could support myself if I didn't work that job. So I stayed in the job. And the longer that I stayed in that job, 
the longer or the more my emotional discomfort built upon itself and it was getting worse it was getting worse and at the same time there was this pain in my body it started in my hip flexors it moved to my quads then it moved round to my glutes and it was like that feeling that if you've done a really full-on workout at the gym and your muscles are really really tight and sore and throbbing it was it was that and it was over months and months and months this this tightness and this pain was getting more intense and it was moving slowly and it got to the point that it then morphed into sciatica, so down one of my legs and into my glute. There was this, like, you know, searing pain um, that would just stop me in my tracks and bring tears to my eyes. And then it progressed to not being able to walk. So it was just incredibly intense and incredibly emotional. And, and when your body is just kind of falling down around you, it's just this, it feels so freaking hopeless. So not only was my physical body doing stuff, but my emotional body was doing stuff. And I was just, it was a pretty dark place, um, time in my life. Um, but what happened then was I was forced back into that MRI machine. So as I've said previously, I had first had my brain MRI and found symptoms and evidence of MS, but not had a diagnosis of MS um, about two years before that. And then I needed to be re-MRI'd, and the irony is that I worked for a radiology company so they could plonk me back in the machine, but this time it was for a bulged disc in my back. So it was to do with sciatica, it was to, to do with back pain. The other ironic thing was that the neurologist that I approached because I trusted her actually happened to be a specialist in MS. That was her area of expertise. <laughs> Go figure, right? The universe has freaking amazing, amazing plans in weird and wonderful ways. So I was forced back in that MRI machine and it was her that did my health history and said to me, Danny, you haven't had an MRI for two years, you need to have another one. So back into the MRI machine I went um, and that was when she um, saw my MRI, um, she happened to MRI my brain and my spine this time and look for evidence of lesions in both and see them. And the funny thing is that as I've said before, in New Zealand at that point, the diagnostic criteria was actually different to Australia. So <laughs> in one country, I didn't have MS, New Zealand. Yet in Australia, all I needed was one symptom, which I'd had, and a brain MRI, <laughs> which I also had, lesions on my brain and spine, um, to have a diagnosis. So at that point, this is two years ago now, <laughs> I had a diagnosis in New um, Australia and not in New Zealand, which was an interesting place to be in because a part of me still at that point didn't quite believe that I had this thing going on for me um, and also I didn't believe it because I didn't have neurological symptoms so to sort of wrap up this part of the story um, at that point, I didn't have any symptoms of MS, yet I had a diagnosis in one country and not in the other. Um, and so with my background and my understanding of health, which I'll get into in the next video, I chose not to take on medication for MS. And I will explain why in the next video and where I'm at right now. <laughs> Thank you for watching.